Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Mass, and I'm an application engineer here at Allied PLM Solutions. I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's Lunch Bytes webinar, where we're going to explore the capabilities of the drawing format tools that were released in NX8, as well as cover some tips and general information that will be beneficial when creating a drawing template. Here at Allied PLM, we like to keep end users up to date on the latest developments with the engineering software products we support. One of the ways we do that is by hosting afternoon sessions such as this one. Future sessions will be delivered once a month, usually on the second Thursday of each month at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Previously recorded sessions can be found on our website at www.liplm.com. There you will also find upcoming Lunch Bites topics and dates. We want our Lunch Bites to be valuable to you, so please let us hear your suggestions on topics we should cover via email. We have several of you on the line with us today, therefore you will be in listen-only mode. Should you have any questions regarding today's material, feel free to write them down, email them to me directly at paul.mass at liplm.com. The drawing for format toolbar is new in NX8 and will help those who have been tasked with designing their company's drawing templates to be more efficient in producing templates that are robust and user friendly. Whether you're a CAD administrator or an end user, having some general knowledge about templates and their creation will make you a stronger NX operator and a more valuable asset to your company. So it's just a little bit of general info about uh, templates, what, what their purpose is, why we use them. Uh, templates are basically used as a base or a starting point when creating a new part file. The, the main reason we use templates is to, main company, to maintain company-wide consistency for all models and drawings. Uh, the templates directory, which we're going to be exploring a little bit today, contains all template part files and PAX files. If this is the first time you've heard about PAX files, that's fine, don't be alarmed, I'm going to... Uh, cover those in detail as well. Template part files are set up according to the desired layout and modeling and drafting preferences. So not only the look and feel of the model, but also what my preferences are as well. The PAX file controls what is seen on the File New menu and is used as a roadmap to direct all the elements required for a template. By the elements, I mean uh, a JPEG for a preview of what the template looks like, the actual seed file, the template seed file, and other information like um, a description of the template. Files created from a template will inherit the same layout and preferences. Uh, so when you go to File New, anytime you pick a template, it's going to inherit those same, the same layout and preferences. One thing to note is that the templates directory can exist on the user's machine or on a server. For the today's agenda, uh, we're going to explore the templates directory to see how pa the PAX file drives the file new menu. I have the location there in case you want to uh, come view the replay and you're just interested in where the templates directory is located. But then we're going to create a drawing template from scratch utilizing the new drawing format toolbar. Some of the commands we're going to use on that toolbar are the borders and zones command, the title block command, and the mark as template command. I'm also going to show you how to set up layers and groups which is another important aspect of templates. Then I'm going to use automatic text to populate a title block so that there's some intelligence behind the title block and it goes out and grabs cer certain system attributes. Then we'll explore customer defaults versus preferences. Some settings are specific to a part while others are specific to a session, meaning that um, things like annotation style, uh, background color, things of that nature are specific to the part, meaning they stick with the part. There's other settings that are specific to the session, so I want to make sure all my part preferences are set up in my template file. That way, any files created from that will mimic that template. Then I'm going to create. I'm going to show you how to create an environment variable that'll be used to map NX to a template structure that resides on the server. So, uh, you know, if you're a CAD administrator and you take this time to set up the templates in the PAX files, you want to have that template directory that resides on the server and then you want to have the client machines pointing to that directory. Once we get our template created, then we'll create a new, uh, a new drawing utilizing that template. Once we're inside of that new drawing, I'm going to show you how to link an attribute to an attribute of the part that we're detailing so that the uh, title block automatically populates with the description of the part. So here we are inside of NX. I have NX8 up right now. So when I come to File New, the things I hear on my see on my File New dialog 
I need to understand that all these options here, model, assembly, shape, studio, NX sheet metal, all of these are being driven by a template. So here before, as I mentioned earlier, there's a JPEG that exists for this preview. Uh, we have some description material down here, the name, the type, the units, things of that nature. The only option here that does not create a part from a template is this one down here called blank. This is just a system setting that does not look back at a template. So then I can come over here to the drawing tab and I'll see the same things. I have standalone PAR templates and I reference existing parts. I'm going to leave that on standalone. And now let's take a look at the PAX file so we can see how there are similarities. So my PAX file resides in this, uh, if I'm on just the client machine, it resides on my C drive, program files, Siemens, NX8, UGII, and then templates. Within this directory, within this folder, you can see that all of those JPEGs reside here. Uh, all of the PAX files reside here, and all of the part files, the, the template seed part files reside here as well. So I'm going to take a look at the UGS underscore drawing templates PAX file. So if I have this PAX file pulled up, and let me see if I can share screens here between my two, uh, two windows. So here we can see my PAX file. Up at the top is just some XML information. Uh, we can see presentation name, drawing templates, drawing new. File new tab, this information right here, drawing, points to the tab that we have in our file new tab, just how it sounds. Then we can start seeing palette entries. Palette entry ID D1 is going to be this A dash size drawing. We can see presentation name equals A dash size. Then over here we can see description creates an eight and a half by 11 size drawing. We can see how that uh, mimics what's seen over here in my new file dialog description over here. We can see right here the file name is drawing underscore A dash size template.prt. So that is the template seed file that also resides in the templates directory. Here we can see what units, so if my units is set to English, then I'm going to see this template underneath what my units are set to in my file new dialog. When it says use master model yes, that's basically just saying that here it would be my use master model when it's referencing a part. So that in a nutshell is we can see kind of how the PAX file drives what's seen on my file new. So with some of the tools that were released in NX8, we can create a template, you know, do the work of the layout, and then there's these tools that we're going to use today are going to automatically generate a PAX file similar to this that's basically XML code that's going to drive you know, a new entry, a new palette entry here on one of our tabs. I'm going to close that out for now. So basically what I want to do is just start a brand new file. I'm going to be on uh, the model tab and I'm going to choose blank and I'm actually going to put this file on my desktop in a folder that I have called templates. Now this isn't the templates folder that resides in my root directory on my C drive but it's I'm using it here so that I'm going to show you how to point to this file as if this this folder existed on a server. So this is where I want to store my part and I'm going to call my part ally plm draft and we're going to make it a 20 by 30 20 by 30 draft. I'm going to select OK. Since this is going to be a draft template, I want to go into my drafting environment. And you can see that the first thing that pops up when I'm in my drafting environment is my sheet. What size do I want my sheet to be? Well, I could, could use a template, and that would be driven by a different PAX file or a standard size. For this case, it's going to be a custom size. I want my height to be 20. And I want my length to be 30. I'm going to leave my scale the same way it is, but it is uh, good to note that we are going to use these values later when we automatically populate the title block. 
and I can go ahead and select OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Before I get into actually creating the layout of my template, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the format toolbar and categories. It's good to set up categories that so I can have different things reside on different layers. A category um, can include multiple layers. So I'm going to go ahead and create some categories here. We'll say uh, the first one I want to create is called component. Maybe I want all my components to reside on layers 1 through 50. So I just typed in 1 dash 50, the range. I struck enter on the keyboard. I'm going to select OK. Put a star back up in there so we can see. Now I'm going to I'm going to create a category called standard hardware. Maybe I want all my standard hardware to reside on layers 1 through 10. And you might be asking, well, you've already used 1 through 50. A layer can belong to one or more categories at a time. I'm going to go ahead and create some other ones here. Vendor parts. Maybe I want my vendor parts to reside on layers 11 through 20. Drafting objects. I want those to reside on 51 through 100. A type of drafting object are center lines. Maybe I want my center lines to reside on layers 51 through 60. And of course, this is going to be specific to your company. I'm just going to show you kind of an example of what a category structure might look like. I'm going to create a category called dimensions and annotations. I want all my dimensions and annotations to lie on 61 through 70. Tables, or maybe I'm going to have tables throughout my drawing. I want those to be on 71 through 80. Notes on layer 255, so I can have just a single layer as opposed to a range of layers. And then last but not least, format, which is what we're going to be dealing with today, the drawing format. I'm going to have that be layer 256. So I've created all my categories here, and so now let's go and look at some of the layer settings. We can see that if I have category display turned on, I'm able to see all my categories and what layers are included within that category. Notice here that layers 51 through 60 not, on, are not only belong to the center lines category, but also belong to the drafting objects category. If I want to look at components, I can see that components include layers 1 through 50, but I've also specified that 1 through 10 are standard hardware components, and 11 through 20 are vendor parts. Okay, so just an idea of uh, how I can see my category structure there. I'm mostly concerned right now with my format layer, and the way I can make that my work layer is by double clicking on it. Because all the objects I'm about to add, the zones and borders, I want to reside on layer 256. So I've double clicked that, that's my work layer now. Some of the options down here when I have a layer selected, say if I had two, I can say make selectable, make work layer, make visible, or I can make invisible. Currently there's no objects that reside on that, so make invisible is not an option. So I set my work layer to 256. Now the first thing, I would, the, the toolbar that's new in NX8 is this thing called the drawing format toolbar. Let me see if I can't pull this out a little bit. So a way to access that, if I close it out here, I can right click and open space up on my toolbar and I'll see it down here towards the bottom of my list. I can turn a check on, that'll bring it to the front. I am able to dock it inside here if I want, but I'm going to keep it pulled out just so we can draw attention to it. The first thing I want to create are some borders and zones. So notice that the dashed line currently is my 20 high by 30 wide sheet of paper. I'm going to create some borders and zones. Before we had to draw these in with lines. It was pretty time consuming. 
now it, the, with this new tool, it's going to automatically generate those for me. As I ho hover over the sections of my borders and zones toolbar, I'm going to get a little diagram to display exactly what it's talking about. So when I create borders is that um, red line seen on the inside of my sheet. I'm going to leave that. I want to set that 0.3, uh, basically 3 eighths off from the dashed line that I see. I want left and right arrows. I can set this to a left arrow only if I want, and just a dash on the other side. I'm going to leave that left and right. This is pretty self-explanatory stuff. As I hover over it, I'm going to get a little diagram. So I want left and right arrows turned on, bottom and top arrows. Uh, the extension line is how far it's going to extend past the border. Create trimming marks. I can see that there be, can be trimming marks. Maybe if I print this out on a big sheet of paper, I want to see where I should trim this thing up at length, thickness. So a lot of this stuff is some of the out-of-the-box settings that I'm going to leave. One thing I do want to adjust are my zones. I'm going to set it to the vertical size of my zones to 2 so that I'll have, you know, if my sheet of paper is 20 high by 30 wide, I'll have 10 uh, zones going vertically and 10 zones going horizontally. The ridge I'm going to leave at bottom left create markings are basically all the little red dashes I see in there in the diagram. Marking height, I do want those to be a sixteenth of an inch uh, less than my border offset. So you can see here is 0.3125. Up top it's 0.375. So there will be a little bit of distance uh, between where my zone markings end and my dashed line begins. Create zone labels. Obviously I want to have letters and numbers designating my zones label height, text font, and uh, I'm going to leave all my margins set to zero. So as soon as I hit OK, we can see that it automatically goes out and creates these uh, borders and zones. Here are my trimming. Um, here are my zone markings. Here's my labels. So pretty cool stuff. This was much more time consuming before NX8. If I go back to my layer settings, I can now see that my format category, which includes Layer 256 now has 136 objects on that layer. Now I want to talk about starting to create a title block. In order to do that, I need to come in here and insert a table. And I'm going to create a table that's 2 by 5. I'm just going to kind of drop it out here in the middle of nowhere. So really, in order to set up a title block, a title block can in, uh, include one or more tables. So I want to first put some time and effort into developing my tables. And then once I have my tables all set up correctly, then I can come up here and use this title block command. And that's what I'm, I'm going to eventually get to. So the first thing I want to do is merge these two cells. I'm going to extend the height of this cell up to 1.375 because I I'm going to and put a logo in there. That's just talking about auto size. And I'm going to make this one too wide, this column too wide, and I'll make this one 1.75 wide. So the first thing I want to do is import an image. There I have my uh, my so I can put a logo in that top cell. Maybe in this cell I want it to be drawn, checked, the engineer. So basically these are this is going to be my signature box or where people are going to initial. And then maybe I also have a manufacturing engineer who needs to sign off to uh, decide whether or not this thing can really be manufactured. So once I have my first table created, I'm going I want to create another table to complete my title block and in essence of saving time uh, I'm just going to copy it from one over here where I've already created this. I'm just going to highlight it, do a control C to copy it to my clipboard, come back over to the one we're working on and hit control V to paste it. So basically this one uh, I did the same way. I think it was originally a five by six table and I've, I've merged some cells and I've also uh, gone under style to turn some of the bottom board. You can see that the description cell, where did this word description lies is a single cell, but here we can see if I come under cells, 
I'm able to turn off and turn on you know the border of that particular cell so I want that to be invisible so I've taken a little bit of time to set up this table in essence of saving time for the demonstration I went ahead and uh, create it that way then I can come down here and align those two pretty close together and now what I want to do is use some system attributes to automatically populate these blocks. So for my first one, my size, I can say, I can right click and do edit text. And before I show you that, I'm going to actually show you where these are coming from. So if I come up here to help, I go to NX help, I can drive to CAD, drafting, uh, drawing automation, then automatic text. So here's a few things that we can use on my drawing template that are system attributes that can return certain values. So if I enter this for the text, it's going to return the value, in this instance, the sheet number of the current sheet. So the, the text, the, the cell I'm editing currently, I believe is the size. So if I come down here to size, caret w at dollar sheet underscore, sh underscore sheet underscore size, I can copy that text, paste it in here, select OK, and we'll see that my cell has automatically populated with the size of my sheet. So I'm just going to go, kind of go through the motions here, and we can see uh, maybe how I would do some other stuff. So for this one, right-click and do Edit Text, Scale, Space. I'm going to come back here to my uh, Scale Numerator. I want to put a colon, then I want to come in and do scale denominator. So we can see scale one to one, that's my sheet scale. Maybe over here I want the sheet. So I'll do edit text, sheet. my current sheet number I can put the word of and my total number of sheets so now I have sheet one of one so it's important to put some time into setting this up correctly drawing number maybe I want this this I obviously want to be the title of my part file whatever's in front of the dot PRT I can populate that as well and that's going to be my sheet part name Now for description and for revision, I'm going to create some attributes that can be changed by the user. Uh, if you are using Team Center, we can, we have the ability to, currently these are the system attributes that are available to us. If you are a customer that's using Team Center, you're able to go and set up more uh, system attributes or attributes that are going to be pulled out from Team Center and you can populate your title block that way. But for these two, I'm going to set up some attributes. So I'm going to come into File, Properties, and I'm going to create one called uh, DS, DESC for description. And the value I'm going to give it, and this will make more sense as we uh, go into editing, uh, creating a new part file, I'm going to put edit via file dash props reference text object attribute. I'm going to say choose master model attribute 
because my master model is going to have an attribute that I can link to this drawing attribute, which will automatically populate that. So I hit my green check mark. I want to create one more called revision, and the value I'm going to give it is A. Select OK. So now I want to populate this with a, I want to drop my category down to relationships. I'm going to say insert part attribute. I want to grab this attribute right here select OK. So we can see when the user goes to create a new part file, it's going to, it's going to draw his attendance saying edit this, edit this value by going to File Properties, Reference Text, Object Attribute, Choose Master Model Attribute. And so it's kind of an annotated way of uh, kind of leading them down the path of how he's going to change this value. Come in here and link that up, so that'll automatically populate. I think I have pretty much everything that I want in my title block now. So I'm going to come hit save to save my work so far. Now I can use my title block tool. First thing it's going to say is to uh, define my title block. So I'm going to select this table and this table. Now the cells that already have something in them. I want to lock those down because I don't need I don't need the end user to edit those. And this one's going to be driven by a linked attribute as well, so I'm going to lock that one. The ones that are linked to system attributes, we can see that those are system locked. We lock that one too. Basically, it's just a blank cell sitting there. The other thing I want to do is I want to set the label here. That's what's going to be seen when I go to populate title block. This is what the end user is going to see. So I want this to say drawn. This one's going to be checked. I need to go back to edit my definition there. I didn't get all this filled out. Hit OK too soon. I think that's about it. So basically, the, the, this one's going to be locked down. They're not going to be able to fill out a value here. They're, then they're going to have a blank cell to fill out, and they need to know there's going to be a label attached to this cell that they need to fill out, and this is what's going to tell them to put there. It would help if I put a T, huh? So now we can see if when I go to populate title block, I forgot to lock down a cell there. But so now we can see here's the label, and then they're going to put in the value here. So let me go back to uh, edit the definition of my title block. I'm just right clicking, hitting edit, edit definition. There's one I forgot to lock down that was my drawing number. I'm going to lock that down. Okay, cool, so that's what they'll see when they create a new file from this template. Hit fit and save. Another thing I want to draw your attention to, I talked about um, drafting preferences, modeling preferences, and how those differ from customer defaults. So when I come up on here to, uh, let me put a sketch line out here. Uh, where's that sketch curve? Let me just put a line. And now, let me hit finish sketch. Now, if I come in here and put a dimension and see how my extension lines go all the way up to the end of that line, what if I want a gap in between there? To edit a single one, I can right click and hit style. But if I want all my dimensions from here on out to have that gap, I need to come up and edit my preferences, annotations, come up here to my line arrow, and I want to edit the values of H and J. Maybe I want to make those 0 0.1, 0 0.1, have a 0.1 gap, and select OK. Now that specific preference sticks with the part file. So now if I come in and set a dimension, I can see I have that gap. 
So one question that often comes up is, well, what's the difference between uh, customer defaults and preferences? Well, I can show you that. If I come over here to, uh, actually, I want to get rid of this stuff because we don't want to save that to our drawing template. Uh, maybe I'll leave them for a second. If I come up to File, Utilities, and go to Customer Defaults, I can hit a search here. I'll actually take this to English since we're dealing with an English template. I can come up to this little search button and maybe I type in extension line, strike enter to uh, return that and find all customer defaults. Notice that there's quite a few settings that deal with extension lines. Here we can see our H and J values. Notice the scope. The scope column is what I want to draw your attention to, that it sticks with the part. Once I've set this preference in the part, it's going to stick with that part. So H and J is going to stick with the part once I've set that preference. If I were to search for something as uh, broad as annotation, I can see that there's a lot of settings for annotations. Notice the scope column. I got some that stick with the part and some that are controlled by the session. So when I go under analyze, analyze measure, the display of my line color, this is a session setting, okay? So just kind of a, a way to key in on what how settings are controlled, whether it's controlled by the customer defaults or if it's a preference within the part, this is how I can figure that out. So now if I go in here to edit the style of this, here I, I have, there's multiple different tabs, you know, there's a lot of different settings that I can play with. But I want to draw your attention down here. If I change this value, maybe I want to take my gap up to 0 0.2. Okay, if I hit reset, it's going to reset it to what the value was before I made that change. If I hit load defaults, it's going to load the defaults that are stored in customer defaults, which were zero, if you remember. If I do load all defaults, it's going to load the defaults for all the tabs up here. This load defaults will just load all the defaults for the value on this tab only. Load all defaults is going to load the default values for all these tabs. The defaults it's talking about were the customer defaults under file, utilities, customer defaults. So if I go to customer stamp, we can see that uh, Well, that H and, H and J value is actually in here. We're running close on time, so let me continue moving forward. But So that's how you can tell whether it's controlled by the part or the session. Let me get rid of this stuff. I don't want to save this to my template. So now I have my title block defined. I have my zones and borders. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now I'm ready to do mark as template. Oh, and by the way, I should have, I meant to mention earlier, so this is, this Marcus template button is going to go out and create the PAX file for us. This used to be a manual operation. If you're interested in uh, getting a little bit more background or if you're prior to NX8, you can go to our knowledge base on allyplm.com and come to resources, go down to knowledge base, and we have how to create a drawing template and add to NX 7.5 template list right here. So that would be uh, prior to NX8 and prior to that drawing format toolbar. So now I'm ready to hit mark as template. I want to mark as template and update my PAX file. My presentation name, I want it to be Ally PLM draft underscore 20 by 30. I'm going to give it a description, creates a 20 by 30 standard drawing. I do want it to re re uh, reference an existing part as opposed to being a standalone. And now here's where I get to specify my PAX file. I'm going to have it be stored in the same location where the part file is being stored. So I'm going to come out here to my desktop where I have a templates folder. And I'm going to call this, uh, I can give it a name here. I can have it write to an existing PAX file, which I don't want to do because I want to examine just our own. And I'm going to say ally drawing templates, select OK, 
and I'm going to select OK. It's going to give me a message. This part is now marked as a template part. In order to maintain the setting, the part must be saved. Saving the part will add this part to the template collection and update the PAX file. So I'm going to say OK there. I'm going to come in here and hit Fit, Save. One thing I want to do before I exit out of this is I'm going to come back under to my layer settings and I'm going to make my format layer visible only. Well, I need to set my work layer. Let's say I set my work layer to layer one. Now I can come under here and format and I want to set this to visible only so that the end user can't just click in the title block and start making changes. So click on visible only. Now I can see it's checked as visible only. Hit close. Save that. Now notice I can't just click in here. So now the part file I created and the PAX file I created reside on this templates directory. If this is a templates templates folder that re, uh, resides on a server somewhere, I need to tell NX how to point to that server. So here we can see my ally drawing templates PAX file that was created. It looks similar to the one we looked at earlier just without the, uh, the line indents. And we can also see my part file here too, my template part file. In order to point to that directory, I need to come back into my root directory, my UGII folder, and I want to look for a file called UGII underscore environment dot dat. So we can see here, this is where I can override uh, variables. I'm going to add a note. Anything with a pound sign in it is, is a note. I'm going to say, so this is in case anybody comes in here to change it uh, at a later date, setting the environment changed on the 1st of November 2012. So now when it doesn't have the pound sign in front of it, that means I'm actually making a change. So I want to create a variable called UGII. It has to be all caps, underscore template, underscore DIR for directory. And I want to set that equal to the path of the wherever my server folder is. In our case, it's going to be this templates directory out here. So I can just come out here and copy this path. I need to get back to my, I can paste that path there. So now this is going to override the system and say, okay, now go point to the templates directory or the templates folder at this location. Make a save to that, close it. I need to restart NX in order to, to capture those changes. So now the, the templates directory, it's, it's no longer pointing to, I have it open in two different, so before I told you that the original templates directory out of the box, UGII templates is currently right here. So notice we don't have that Ally PLM PAX file in here. We don't have the Ally PLM part file in here. It's on, it's the, they're both contained in the one out on the desktop. So we, we changed that variable. We overrode the variable to look at this folder and now it's looking at the folder on the desktop out here. So now when I come into file new, if I come over to my drawing, I say check this down to a reference existing part because that's how we design our template. There we go. There's our custom template. Ally PLM draft underscore 20 by 30 creates a 20 by 30 standard drawing. It went ahead and captured a JPEG or a preview of it. All right. It wants to reference an existing part file, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new model real quick. I'm just going to call it block. 
maybe I'll give it a, a part number, block 5689. And I'm going to create this on the desktop. So now I've created just a, a, a blank model. I'm going to insert a block here. Okay, so let's say I have my model, and now I want to create a drawing of this. I'm going to do File, New. I'm going to come over and choose my custom template. It's already uh, referencing this part file. Select. Actually, before that, I want to create a, I want to create a uh, variable in here. Let's say I want to create one called uh, part description. And I want to give it a value of uh, block four by four by four. Say OK and save it. So now if I go to File Properties, I can see I have a user-defined attribute here, part description block 4 by 4 by 4 We can point to that attribute in my drawing. We can link them up together so that if that attribute ever changes at the part level, my drawing is going to automatically uh, update. File New, come over to my Drawing tab, choose my custom template there, select OK. Now, notice what happens. I automatically get my populate title block dialog coming up. I'm only going to see what I need to fill in. Uh, you know, I've locked the rows that I don't want the user to be able to fill in. My labels are being displayed. Here's where I'm going to type in my value. It's drawn by Pete Mass. Checked maybe by uh, N. Gill. Maybe the engineer is B. Carter. These are all my coworkers, by the way. And maybe the manufacturing guy is B-Roll. Maybe you recognize some of those names if you've watched some of our other Lunch Bites. I can hit close. I don't want to place any views just yet. So notice that's, that's automatically populated. My drawing number is automatically populated by the part file. I, got to, I see the other populated text now. If I'm the end user and I want to edit this description, it's telling me to edit this via file properties, reference text, object attribute, and then I want to link to the an attribute that's at the part level here. So I can come under File, Properties, Here's the one I want to edit. You know, here's the value currently. It's telling me the directions of what to do. So I have that one highlighted. It's telling me reference text. I'm going to hit reference text. I want to do an object attribute. The object I want to select is my component. Okay, and then I can see attributes that exist within that component. I can select OK. So we can now I can see that those two attributes are linked together. Select OK. Notice that my description automatically updated. And then I could go in and continue creating this uh, creating this drawing. If at any time this attribute changes at the part level, maybe I now want to give it 5689. Hit OK. I come over here back to my drawing. Well, we can see that that updates this value in the description because those attributes are linked to each other. So I know I ran over a little bit, but if you take the time up front to set up these templates, you're going to have consistency across the board throughout your company with models and drafts. Um, if you, I know we went fast over this. If you come with any questions, please feel free to email me, paul.mass at allyplm. I want to thank you for this time this afternoon. We are going to have our next Lunch Bite series on December 13th where we're going to be covering some special tools within NX such as the Command Finder, Dynamic Sectioning, Global Shaping, and a few others. Uh, let me bring up a slide here to give you some of our info. So again, that's uh, here's my contact info, here's our website. Uh, you can now go directly to our website to view replays. Uh, you won't be able to see them on YouTube. You'll be able to get them right from our website now. 
Also here are our technical support hotline numbers and our technical support email. Don't worry, we're from Tech Support. If you have run into any problems, give us a call. Thank you for your attention today and I uh, look forward to seeing you back here soon.